If we slow down your multiple sclerosis with disease-modifying therapies, and yet you're miserable because of chronic symptoms, we are not doing our best job. Howdy. My name is Aaron Boster. I'm an MS neurologist in Columbus, Ohio. And in today's video, I'm going to teach you how to tackle chronic symptoms. In clinic, I do that using a multi-pronged approach involving changes to lifestyle, diet, exercise, and the judicious use of symptomatic medicines. In today's video, I'm going to focus on those medicines. And by the end of the video, you'll know my go-to medicines to combat common chronic MS symptoms. Now don't turn away because all of that starts right now. Fatigue and cog fog are some of the most common symptoms in MS and the leading cause of loss of work in people impacted by the condition. They're insidious and invisible, and yet they can make it hard to be productive or to even enjoy time with friends and family. Beating fatigue and cog fog requires a multi-pronged approach. And if you'd like to learn about lifestyle changes, I'll throw a card up here so you can check that out later. Lotions and potions, medicines can help a tremendous amount. And my go-to medicine is one called Provigil or Modafinil. This is the medicine they oftentimes give airline pilots when they fly across the Atlantic to keep them awake and sharp. And it does wonders in the setting of MS. It can be taken first thing in the morning or sometimes we dose a second one right at noon and it can really help with work performance and in your quality of life. As a pro tip, I like my patients to take one to two days off each week. I call that a drug holiday so the drug can reset itself and your body doesn't become tolerant to the medicine. A second go-to medicine, if Provigil's not working, is a medicine called Adderall, or sometimes I use Ritalin. These are amphetamine salts and more traditional stimulants, and they're also very effective. They tend to have a faster onset, and for some people, they even work better. Now, these medicines have a higher dependence and tolerance potential, and it's even more important to do drug holidays. The bottom line is, if you have fatigue and cog fog, don't accept that. Talk to your MS neurologist and ask for one of these medicines to up your game. Did you know that people impacted by MS are twice as likely to experience depression compared to the general population? Depression is invisible and yet insidious and colors everything gray. The good news is, is that we can easily combat it. In addition to a lifestyle of exercise and talk therapy, there are excellent medicines to knock out depression. My go-to medicine for managing depression is a drug called Welbutrin. I love Welbutrin, which is an atypical antidepressant. It causes a boost in energy, which is great for people impacted by MS. They make an extended release pill so you can take it first thing in the morning and you don't have to redose all day. It doesn't cause weight gain and it doesn't impair sexual function. And it helps curb the desire to smoke, which is awesome because smoking speeds up MS. Now, as a warning, Wellbutrin is not for everyone. And in fact, if you have a seizure disorder, it's a no-no medicine. But I absolutely love using Wellbutrin to knock out depression in the setting of MS. My second favorite antidepressant is an old school SSRI called Zoloft or Sertraline. I love Zoloft because it's very well tolerated and you can go from a very, very small dose up to a very high dose as needed. It's also really good for knocking out anxiety. Now, as a pro tip, in some patients, I find that I can combine Zoloft and Wellbutrin and the effects are synergistic. One plus one is three, and they sort of balance each other out. If you're suffering from depression, talk to your neurologist. We can treat it. When I was in medical school, my professor taught us that MS doesn't cause pain, but my professor was dead wrong. MS causes a lot of different kinds of pain. And fortunately, there are great medicines to knock it out. We have great success using neuropathic pain medicines, oftentimes invented to treat seizures or depression, which also work to treat this kind of pain. My go-to medicine is a drug called gabapentin or Neurontin. I love this medicine because you can use a very low dose or a very high dose. You can dose it only as needed or literally up to four times a day. So there's a tremendous amount of flexibility in knocking out neuropathic pain. My second favorite medicine is a drug called Cymbalta. Now this is not a seizure medicine, it's actually one invented to treat depression, but it works excellent to treat neuropathic pain. And if you show me someone who's hurting, I'll oftentimes show you someone who's sad about it, so I never mind getting a twofer. If you have neuropathic pain, don't settle for that. Talk to your MS provider and consider going on one of these medicines. Simply put, spasticity sucks. Spasms, cramps, charley horses, and stiff legs are all too common in the setting of MS. In fact, over 70% of people manifest some form of spasticity. Spasticity is best managed with a multi-prong approach. This involves movement and exercise, stretching, hydration, and 
Medicines. My go-to medicine for spasticity is baclofen. Baclofen is a chemical compound which mimics a neurotransmitter called GABA. That's the stop neurotransmitter. So when you take baclofen, you're providing your body with the neurotransmitter it's missing. This is a anti-spasmodic or a muscle relaxant, and it's my favorite in the setting of MS. Why? Number one, you can have a wide range of doses. I can use just five milligrams before bed, or if I have to, I can use a pretty high dose four times a day. I find that baclofen is less sedating than the other antispasmodics, and it's my go-to when I'm trying to combat mild to moderate spasticity. My second go-to is a medicine called Xanaflex, or Tizanidine. This is a medicine that I particularly like for spasms and cramps, and I like to use it before bed almost exclusively because it has a side effect of sedation which is fantastic when you're trying to get your snooze on. Multiple sclerosis can impact your bladder. Many people suffer from what's called overactive bladder, where they have urinary frequency and they have to go to the bathroom way too often, or urgency, where when they need to go, it's right now, or they have nocturia, getting up multiple times a night to empty their bladder. Sometimes they can't make it in time and they can have an accident. Don't settle for that. My go-to medicine to knock out overactive bladder is a drug called Merbetric. Why? because it has very few cognitive side effects as compared to the old school medicines, which do. If we can't get someone Merbetric or they can't handle it, my second fave is a drug called Tropsium or Sanctura for the exact same reasons. Don't settle for overactive bladder. Go to your neurologist and ask for one of those pills. Now, not everyone with MS has overactive bladder. Sometimes they have the exact opposite problem, urinary retention. This is a situation where it's hard to empty your bladder. It's sometimes hard to get your stream started or you can't get it all out. You may have to push on your bladder. You may pee and then have to sit right back down and continue to go again. People with urinary retention sometimes have such a full bladder that it just releases. That's horrible. There's a different medicine for that, a medicine which actually was invented to treat men's enlarged prostates, but it works in both men and women to treat urinary retention. It's called Flomax or Tamsulosin and it can be dosed just once before bed. Now, some people, nature is way too generous, and they actually have both overactive bladder and urinary retention. The good news is we can use both medicines at the same time. So I have some patients where they take Merbetric and Flomax, and their bladder works great. Many people impacted by MS discover that when they go out in the hot sun, or when they heat their core body temperature up by exercising, they become weak where their old neurological symptoms come back out. This is called heat sensitivity and motor fatigue, and it's a nasty symptom. Fortunately, there's an FDA-approved therapy for it called Ampira, or 4-aminopyridine. This is a pill taken twice a day. Now, not everyone responds to it, but when people respond, they literally have a Lazarus effect, where they can go back out in the heat and they don't melt. They can get their exercise on and their old symptoms don't come back out. This medicine is not for everyone. And if you have a seizure disorder, it's a no-no medicine. But if you suffer from heat sensitivity or motor fatigue, definitely talk to your neurologist about trying this medicine out. For those that respond, it's a massive game changer. Have you ever been exhausted all day long and then you have trouble falling asleep at night? Insomnia sucks and it's all too common in the setting of MS. Either difficulty with initiating sleep or staying asleep. The best way to combat insomnia is actually lifestyle changes. And so if you'd like to learn more about that, I'll throw a card up here and you can check it out later. I don't love prescription sleep aids. I sort of feel like that's Bugs Bunny smacking you on the head with a hammer and knocking you out. And you can literally become dependent on these medicines or you don't sleep at all. I much prefer to use several natural substances, which I find work very, very well. These are things like melatonin, CBD gummies, and magnesium, all of which can be obtained over the counter. If you're not getting restorative sleep, you're making the next day so much harder. Don't settle for insomnia and talk to your doctor about some of these natural medicines. Remember that combating chronic symptoms requires a multi-pronged approach and medicines are just one tool in the toolbox. If you'd like to up your game and learn more about how to beat up on MS, click the video that's on your screen right now. If you found this video helpful, do me a solid and give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. Until my next Monday morning video, or my next monthly live stream, or even better yet, the next time I see you at the Boster Center for MS, this is Aaron Boster saying be safe and take care.